Hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of Quick Tips, and this is actually going to be the very first uh, in a series uh, focused on a tool called Xamarin. So Xamarin is something that I've spent the last six, seven, eight months, it's been a while now, uh, focused on, uh, and it helps me kind of get closer to my desire, my goal, to be able to create mobile applications for all the different big mobile platforms, so Android, iOS, and Windows. And we'll talk about what that is. We'll see that in a second. Uh, but first off, just want to say this is the, the intro video. So this is just going to be kind of talking through, again, what it is, where you can find it, how much it costs, how to download it, that sort of stuff. But this will be a series and a progressive series of adding more and more videos on how to do very specific things in Xamarin. So whether it's how to go out and get some data back from a REST API or how to create a list view or whatever it is, we're going to cover those videos. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump in. If you're not familiar with what Xamarin is, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the Xamarin homepage. Uh, so Xamarin allows you to create cross-platform mobile applications uh, for Android, iOS, and also Windows using C Sharp. Uh, so C Sharp is, is a language that, especially for me in the past couple of years, I've spent a lot of time with. Um, and that's very useful for me because now I can take those skills that I learned with doing just Windows development and kind of take that to be able to do cross-platform. So if, if we kind of think about wanting to target all the different big mobile platforms, so Android, iOS, and Windows, uh, if we wanted to do a, an application for all those platforms, those are typically three very different processes, right, for... For Android, you've got a different language in Java and a different IDE in Android Studio. For iOS, same thing. You've got Objective-C and then uh, Xcode. So for Windows, you've got XAML C Sharp and then uh, Visual Studio, and then you can also do HTML and JavaScript as well. Uh, but that's three different IDEs, three different uh, programming, languages, programming languages, and then three different um, kind of UI, different ways that you do the UI. Uh, so three kind of completely different processes, uh, and that's tough, right? Especially if I'm, if I'm a startup or a small company, or even if I'm a big business, if I want to target all three platforms, uh, well, let's focus initially on just me. That's hard for me to learn all three of those different uh, platforms. If I can learn one platform that takes care of it all, that's amazing. If I'm a business, uh, probably if I have an app on each platform, I have a team dedicated to each platform. So I've got an iOS team, an Android team, and a Windows team. And they kind of work together just to make sure that all the features and things like that are on par with each other. But, again, it's three separate teams. So if you have three people per team and an extra one somewhere, let's say it comes out to ten people. Uh, let's say with Xamarin, you could kind of cut that back to four people on the four or five people on the Xamarin team. So cut your team basically in half and use Xamarin, just Xamarin, to do all those different platforms. So that's where the benefit really comes in. And kind of along those lines, let's take a look at the pricing. So this is a paid product, uh, and I'll talk first about kind of the Indie edition that they have. And the Indie license is $25 a month per platform, so Android and iOS, uh, per developer per month. So if I'm an Indie developer and I want to do Android and iOS, got to pay $50 a month. Uh, if I'm a business, it's $1,000 a year per platform, so it obviously costs a little bit more. Enterprise, again, another step up at $1,900 um, a year um, per platform. And don't forget the per platform, they've got it highlighted up here. Uh, but let's think about, again, let's think about the scenario where if you're a business, you say, wow, paying $2,000 a year for uh, Xamarin, Android, and iOS support, that's kind of expensive. But if you really take a step back and think about that, if you go from, from your development team being 10 people to 5, uh, not only are you cutting down on, on you know the amount of salary that you're paying people, but you're keeping a more consistent project because you're not having three completely separate uh, teams trying to match each other. You've got one team that's really trying to build for each of the platforms in that same technology. So that's the big benefit, uh, That's and, and it really is huge. Uh, so it's something for me personally Again, I love it because I can do all those different platforms uh, with using my C-sharp background. I just want to throw this out there that uh, Xamarin is free for students. So if you're a student, definitely go out there and, and get Xamarin while you have it free. Take advantage of it. Learn it because that could be something that you could use in a job interview later on. It's, it's, I can't overestimate or overstate how important or how beneficial that could be for you on a resume. 
And then also they occasionally do promotions for different things to give out free license. So a couple of months ago, and this is what I did, they gave out free licenses if you were an existing Windows Phone developer. So I had done some Windows Phone applications and got a free account uh, for that. They also, and let me pop over to their Twitter account, and their Twitter handle is Xamarin HQ, so Xamarin Headquarters. Uh, right now until December 31st, so that's coming up quick, so i got to get this out. Uh, they're giving an indie game developers, uh, indie game developers, a free Xamarin subscription. So that's really, really big, right? That's huge, um, and they do that occasionally. So keep an eye out, even if this one's not available by the time you see this video. Keep an eye out for the future because they do things like this uh, every couple of months or so it seems. So we'll see how many they continue to do. So that's the store, uh, or that's the pricing, that's the breakdown. Uh, and again, the benefit is there. You could target three platforms with just one IDE, one language, one everything, right? So that's that's the big deal. Uh, so another step to that, typically in when, in when Xamarin came out, the big focus was, uh, you know, sharing your, your logic, your logic code, uh, going out and connecting to your database and getting data back, or going out and connecting to a REST API, or doing data manipulation on the client side, something like that. All of that logic, since kind of Xamarin coming out, could be shared, right? Just simple C-sharp stuff, go and do some, get some data, do something with it, whatever. Uh, in the last couple of years, they've come out with Xamarin Forms, which takes it a step further and allows you to share UI code. Because previously, you would have to know how to do your UI for Xamarin, or excuse me, for Android, for iOS, and for Windows, all kind of separately. And they, and that would be kind of native, or the, the way of each platform, all of this is considered native. Uh, but you'd have to do it platform specific to do the UI. That's probably a better way to put it. So now with Xamarin Forms, I can share my UI, um, and I can basically, this is how it works. I say, give me a generic Xamarin Forms button, and at, at runtime, it renders according to the platform that it's on. So if I create a, a, uh, a generic Xamarin Forms button, on iOS, it looks like an iOS button. On Android, it looks like an Android button, and so on and so on. So as you can see on here, this is an example of of a Xamarin Forms application. This is a really nice looking application. It's got graphs and it's got uh, a, like a list view at the bottom with different bars across to show how full whatever that thing is. Uh, but we do notice a couple of differences that uh, the title bars look a little bit different. They look like uh, their platforms, the way their platforms handle title bars. Notice Android has a hamburger button menu. Uh, iOS, ha oops, Android, or iOS has this uh, menu uh, bar at the bottom, and then Windows also has a, I think it's the app bar, the command bar, I forget which one it's called, uh, at the bottom as well. Uh, notice that the themes on Android and iOS are different from the theme on Windows Phone, and again, that's just kind of built into, specific to those different platforms, but all of that code is, again, just generic buttons and graphs and text objects that then render appropriately to the platform. So this is really, really huge. You go from being able to share, uh, I don't know, I, making up a number, 60% of your code, 70% of your code for all the logic and all that kind of stuff, to now when you share your UI, you can get into the 90s. And there's going to be some cases where Xamarin Forms just doesn't quite do it for you. So you can go in and customize, you can do a custom renderer. So if I want to say, here's my special button, and here's what it looks like on Android and iOS and Windows, you can do that. Uh, and then you can also go in and do platform specific things. So things like accessing the file storage, those are different paths that you need to get. Getting the context in Android, you can get um, specifically through Android code. Uh, so there's different platform specific things that you can do and there's different ways to do that. And that's gonna be a video coming up soon, which will be kind of cool. So again, Xamarin Forms, A+. Uh, so a couple of resources, first of all, on my blog. So it's James Q Quick. Dot com and then there's a slash Xamarin and that's going to be basically my Xamarin landing page. So I've got a little description here of why I've been focused on Xamarin and this looks a little bit empty but all of this stuff will continue to grow as I publish more blogs and videos and projects and then as I collect more links uh, for the Xamarin homepage, the Xamarin Forms homepage and other tutorials and things that I come across, I'm going to put everything here and it should be really useful for you. And notice I've got uh, a GitHub page here that I've referenced. So I've got a, on my GitHub, James Q Quick again, slash Xamarin. 
Uh, I've got a Xamarin uh, samples page, so I've got a bunch of different samples here. I'm going to add some documentation and make it a little neater. But this will be kind of a package that people could just kind of go through the code and look at, at what I do or download these and uh, run them and test them and see how I do it that way as well. So I'll, I'll plan on adding all of my individual projects to this uh, kind of all-encompassing sample uh, repo and then also do an individual repo for each one of those so that uh, you can download just one at a time basically. So another thing, the developer uh, page for Xamarin, the documentation, developer.xamarin.com. Really good stuff. Uh, tutorials they've got for Android and iOS and Xamarin Forms. Uh, they've got co or, uh, cross platform, so sharing code and best practices. They've got different tutorials. They've got guides and APIs and recipes and samples. All kinds of good stuff. Definitely recommend checking this out, uh, as well as the uh, forms. The forms has been, or yeah, forms have been pretty good. Uh, I've gone and found some pretty like small uh, specific questions answered there, which is really nice. All right, so I want to talk just a few minutes about kind of where and how do you use Xamarin. And so first and foremost, Xamarin has its own IDE, Xamarin Studio. Uh, so you can download it from their homepage. And Xamarin Studio runs on both Mac and Windows. So you could run the same IDE on Mac and Windows. And keep in mind, you have to have a Mac if you want to do iOS development. There's just no other way around it. Apple is good at making you have to have their stuff. That's all right. Uh, so you can do Android, or excuse me, Xamarin Studio on either the Mac or a Windows machine. You also have the option of using Visual Studio if you're on a Windows machine. Uh, and if you wanted to use Visual Studio to target iOS, you can connect through a remote host or to a uh, separate Mac laptop and run an emulator there. So that's not a big deal at all. It actually is really easy to do. Uh, but if you're like me and you've spent a lot of time in Visual Studio and you're used to Visual Studio and you're used to how it works, you can use Visual Studio to do these projects. And I will use uh, Visual Studio for some or most or I don't, I don't know what number of the projects and samples that I'll, and videos that I'll do. Uh, so one thing that I will say, Xam or Visual Studio has a lot more features. It's been around longer. It's more in-depth. Uh, Xamarin Studio, not quite as many features, but maybe a little bit faster, which is kind of nice. Um, so kind of take your pick, play around with each one, see what you think. And just to kind of reiterate that, uh, in Visual Studio here, if I do a new project, I'll get a mobile apps tab, and then I can choose the different kind of mobile apps I want to, I want to do. And we'll actually do that in the next video for the Hello World. I'll cancel that. So that's basically going to wrap up uh, this first intro quick tips video on Xamarin. Again, we talked about what it is. We talked about where to find it and how to download it, where you can run it, how much it costs, and why that cost may make sense for you depending on your scenario if you really want to target these different mobile platforms. So that's going to wrap up uh, this first episode of Quick Tips with Xamarin. And stay tuned for more. Next one, we'll take a look at uh, opening our first project and doing a Hello World and running that. So thanks for, thanks for staying tuned, and I'll see you soon.